Hi friends, I was browsing my games library and I asked myself, what is Pine? Pine was released on Steam October 10th, 2019 and published through Congregate. It is also available on Switch and PS4 and 5. Created by a small team from Twirlbound Games based in the Netherlands, and from what I can gather, Pine was created from the final school project of the Twirlbound founders. They look like they have another game called With the Wind, but it appears to be an old Flash game, and since Flash is dead, I am unable to find it. I acquired this game on May the 6th, 2021, which is the day it was released on Epic. To avoid spoilers, I will not be talking about the beginning of the game at all, and focusing more on the core gameplay mechanics. Pine reminds me a little bit of Fable and a little bit of Zelda. The movement and combat mechanics feel very similar to a mashup of both, but it's been about 10 years since I've played any amount of Fable or Zelda, so correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. The world and art style also feel inspired by said games. The island has a few different biomes and many nooks and crannies to explore and discover. The world is not what I would consider large, but from what I can tell is evolving and changing. Let's get into it and I'll show you what I mean. Crafting materials, trading materials, and foods spawn on the ground in specific locations. As you explore around, you will find materials on the ground marked by a white diamond. A red diamond indicates that that resource has been recently harvested and will take time to respawn. The area of the map you are in will have more spawn locations for a specific material that would more commonly be found in that area. For instance, a forested area will have more spawn locations for wood and berries. A desert will have more spawn locations for clay and stone. Now that's not to say you cannot get wood from a desert and stone from the forest, but there are fewer of those spawn locations. Materials can also be obtained through defeating monsters and residents of the island. Monsters will sometimes drop food items and creature essences. Essence from what I've seen is only used in a few recipes, but can be used as a trade item. All items are stored in your pouch for later use, 10 items per stack, and you have very limited inventory space to start. Crafting is quite simple. Recipes are known as ideas. Ideas can be found around the world or traded for at a trader's hut in a village. You will need to be friendly with one of the clans in order to barter with their traders. Speaking of clans, there's five of them that inhabit the world. They send out traders and gatherers into the world to do their own politics and gathering of resources. The Cariblin, a species that resembles caribou. Littler, a small poisonous lizard-like species. Fexels, your high-tech anthropomorphic foxes. Knockers, giant reptilians that shake the ground when they walk. And Gobbledew, some, some kind of chicken or turkey or peacock something. Each species has a variety of villages around the land that you can visit and trade with. There are also donation boxes outside of each village entrance. To improve your standing with said clan, you can donate items within their donation boxes. A hostile clan will attack on site and chase human scum like you down. Fill their boxes up with goods, and they will instantly forget about how you just murdered their entire town. Each village has a town center, which tells you how well the village is doing. The more food and resources you give a village, the more it will grow. The clan gatherers will also assist in this, but any attack from hostiles or the inability to find resources will hinder them. To trade with the clan, you'll need to be friendly with them, otherwise they won't give you anything. Trading is done by balancing the scales in the middle of the trade window. Everything has different worth for each clan. For example, Cariblin value marrowwood and tingle flower more than they do avon peppers and telican chives. I can only assume that they're just basic and don't like flavor. Keep an eye out. On that alliance board, trading with one clan will likely result in losing affinity for another. So far, I've only been able to keep one clan happy at a time. Everyone else just sort of hates me and wants me dead. There are many little secrets and puzzles hidden around. Usually, those lead to new ideas. Not all puzzles are able to be completed. Some require specific items that must be found within dungeons. So if you don't have the right item, you can just look at it and see how much loot's on the other side. Combat in the game is quite simple. If you've played Fable or Zelda, this combat will feel all too familiar. All enemies telegraph their attacks so you can dodge or block accordingly. Raise your shield at the perfect time and you can perfect block, knocking your enemy back a bit and breaking any kind of combo attack they might be doing. Ranged attacks are also a thing. You can unleash fury from afar. Rocks for your sling are free, but arrows are going to cost you. You can craft them or find them around the island. Movement in the game feels nice. You have a stamina bar that will deplete over time. The lower your stamina bar, the slower you do everything, including combat, so make sure you have some stamina before you engage. 
Eating food restores your stamina as well as a chunk of your missing health. Your selected weapon is displayed next to your health and you can freely swap between your melee weapon and your ranged weapon of choice. Top right of the display, your universal all-purpose compass, sundial, and quest pointer device. The white arrow in the middle shows which way you are facing relative to the camera. Below that is your quest tracker and further below that is your special activatable item. Let's take a look at the options menu. Under the gameplay settings, very simple, not much here. Controller vibration and auto aim as well as screen shake. Auto camera steering I find is incredibly annoying and I dislike my view being forced forward so I have that disabled. And you can select from array of vast array of languages. There's so many to select from. Graphical settings. This is a Unity game, so it's pretty bare bones with your standard quality presets. No FOV slider, but it's a third person game, so it's probably okay. Full audio sliders as well as a master volume slider and fully rebindable controls for game for gamepad and keyboard. The world is quite beautiful, and it was a pleasure to run around and discover all of its little secrets. I quite enjoyed my time playing and will be playing more. I recommend that if you like games like Fable, you will also enjoy this game. And now, you know what Pine is. If you're a Fable fan and you think Pine is kind of like Fable, leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to watch another video, just click down the, the, somewhere on the screen. There's a the thing. Just click it.